Hello, it's Usman from Seattle Healthcare Accountants. We are specialists for healthcare businesses, especially for opticians. I'm also the author of the book, How to Start and Run a Successful Optical Practice. This book is more relevant to startups practices, but established businesses can also find it helpful. You can download this book for free from our website. Today's topic name is how to minimize your overall VAT bill and reclaim over declared VAT. The first part of this webinar will focus on minimizing your VAT bill and the second part on reclaiming over declared VAT. Before I start, a word of caution. Currently UK VAT rules are derived from EU law and UK is obliged to respect EU VAT legislation. VAT is just one of many things that may change after Brexit complete. Therefore, whatever we will discuss today is relevant to current VAT legislation. After the UK leaves the EU, the government will take over full, full control over its VAT policies and at this stage nobody knows what will change. However, any new law will take years to implement. Before I start core topics of this video, I would like to make an introduction to general VAT principles. It will take few minutes, but it is important to me that everybody understand them. I'm sure most of you already know, but I would like to recap in case someone is not sure. So, starting with the general principle of VAT is, VAT is sale tax, which is paid by the financial, uh, final consumer of the supply. It is also known as indirect tax, in which the VAT registered business collect VAT from customers and pays to HMRC. In other words, VAT registered businesses act as a middleman. They collect VAT on behalf of HMRC and is to HMRC. VAT have three different types of supplies. Taxable supplies, exempt supplies, and outside the scope of VAT. The taxable supply have three different rates. The standard rate, normally VAT registered businesses charge VAT on their sales at 20%, which is standard rate supply. Some businesses can charge reduced rate, which is 5%, for example, the installation of energy saving products. Zero rated supplies. The amount of VAT on supply is zero, but it is still taxable supply for two reasons. One is to determine VAT registration, and second, all the related input tax is recoverable. Second supply is exempt supply. Certain businesses can supply and uh, exempt supplies and don't have to charge VAT on their sales. Exempt supplies mean no VAT is chargeable on the, on the sales. Unlike zero rated supplies, all the related input tax is not recoverable either. When we discuss the zero rated, you can reclaim all the related input VAT. But in exam supplies, you cannot reclaim related input tax. Where business makes both taxable supplies and exam supplies become partially exam business and may not be able to recover all of its input tax but it really depend on the de minimis role, which we will discuss later in this video. The third and final supply is outside the scope of VAT. In fact, these are supplies not covered by VAT. Anything to do with the law, for example, amity, penalties, uh, wages, dividends, loan, transfer of coin concern, interest is outside the scope of VAT. 
What does that mean is you don't have to declare all these expenses or transaction on your VAT return. So before I move, move to core topic, two terms that accountant often use, and I will be using them a lot. Um, so I, I need to make sure you do understand them. First one is input tax. The term input tax is used for VAT on purchases. The term output tax is used for the VAT on sales. This part of video is all about output tax, tax on your sale, and minimizing your overall VAT bill. Since the ruling of the High Court in case of license in 1995, it has been accepted by HMRC that official or partially exempt businesses. HMRC ha has accepted the supply of specs by an optician is mixer mixer of two supplies, exempt supplies and the standard rate supply. All dispensing or clinical related services provided by qualified optician or exempt supplies, which include site tests, diabetic screening, pre and post contract care, dispensing of specs and contact lenses. These services are also exempt if provided by unqualified staff, but only, only if directly supervised by a qualified person. On the other hand, the supply of goods are standard rated for VAT purpose, such as supply of specs, contact lenses, accessories, lenses, the, all these supplies are, um, are, are standard rated. The principle of partial exemption not only applies to output tax, but it also applies to input tax, which is VAT on purchases. And it is this principle that creates complexity in VAT accounting process for optician. So opticians are partially exempt businesses because they make mix of exempt and standard rated supplies. So how you can determine the correct output tax because you are making mix supplies? To determine correct output tax, there are two methods that optician can choose. Number one is a full cost apportionment, in other words, apportionment system. And the second is STC, separately disclosed charge. If an optician choose an apportionment system, which is FCA, then this has to be agreed with HMRC for individual practice as it requires curing a proper attribution of value as between the standard rate specs and exempt, exempt dispensing. In many cases, an apportionment method based upon the cost of supplies was found to be the most, most practicable, uh, practicable method to use. And it is also easier to implement. However, if you propose to use separate separate charge, separately disclosed charge, STC for spe spectacles and dispensing that were to be disclosed to each patient at the time of sale. HMRC cannot force an optician to use a particular method. It is the optician's responsibility to choose an appropriate method. So you, so you must be making, uh, asking a question to yourself, which would be, which, uh, which method is more tax efficient? From the perspective of our experience of dealing with this VAT implication for opticians, I would say that in the vast majority of cases, the STC system would provide a greater saving of VAT going forward. If one is to compare like with like comparison based on, based on taxable, taxable percentage for both system, the average rate for SDC would be in the range of 35 to 40 percent. And for FCA, full cost apportionment, 52 to 65 percent. So it is therefore clear that the benefit of SDC from the financial point of view is clearly outweighed those of FCA. 
Obviously, these numbers are based on our extensive experience, and they are possible scenarios. Operations do achieve rates outside of these ranges. Let me share, uh, share some numbers with you on, on the next slide. So on this slide, we have five different types of practices with different ranges of uh, turnover. So let's say uh, practice A, uh, let me just get the highlighter. All right. So practice A, this column, the current turnover represent the turnover of the practice for, for 12 months. So practice A currently making turnover of 253,000 pounds. And currently, practice A is using FCA method, which is apportionment method. From our experience, we do know if practice making this much uh, sales, switch from FCA method to SDC, over the year, they make saving of 5,844 pounds. I mean, be precise, but it can, I mean, let's say 6,000 pounds. So you can achieve this extra profit just by switching from one method to another one. You don't have to do anything else. So this is purely a profit that you can add into your net profit. Let's say if you want to make the same profit by just making sales, in next year, you have to make extra 38,000 pound worth of sales to, to come up that profit, that extra profit. So you can save, you can have this profit just switching from one method to another one or you have to make another 40,000 worth of sales to achieve same results. So why not just switch, to, switch from FCA to SDC to have this extra, extra profit? And this figure can go up based on uh, turnover of the practice. Let's say if the practice here, practice A is making turnover of uh, 1 million. Um, and if this practice say from FCA to STC, sorry, practice E is making a turnover of 921,000 um, pounds. And this practice, uh, if decide from uh, switching from FCA to STC, it can have extra VAT saving up to 21,000 pounds. So, there are different scenarios. You can, you can basically imagine your practice under these um, five practices by just looking at, looking at the turnover and see how much you can save over the years. And just imagine this 6,000. If you multiply with the six, it's maybe 30,000 pound of extra profit for the next five years. So it is clear that FCA, uh, in STC, you can make more VAT saving compared to FCA. However, the FCA is a methodology easier to apply and its cost of compliance is significantly low. Even though HMRC requests a review every three years, in reality, the average review period is six years unless there is a material change. For example, you take over any new partner or new practice, or you hire new, uh, new qualified staff, then you have to uh, renegotiate with HMRC. On the other hand, SDC compliance has stricter requirements. In our estimation, I would say 60% of opticians applying SDC are not meeting the full legal requirement. Therefore, the decision whether to change from FCA to SDC is purely exercised in cost benefit. 
At Seattle Accountants, we have created a relatively simple algorithm for determining whether the optician should proceed STC implementation or they stay with FCA. I believe another important thing to mention here is that STC method is very good for specs and lenses, but it is not good for the contact lenses. In our experience, there is a little financial benefit to gain from using STC in accounting for output VAT for contact lens supplies. The cost of STC will be greater than benefit for most opticians as far as contact lenses are concerned. Therefore, we would recommend continuation of fixed taxable percentage as for contact lenses are concerned, but it has to be agreed with HMRC. You cannot just do it without getting agreed with HMRC. Okay, it's uh, so far, it was all about STC. What's the benefit of STC for over FCA? So obviously there, there must be some benefit of, of, of FCA as well. Under various tribunal decisions since 1995, an optician has a legal right to correct his or her VAT return retrospectively for four years period. In this particular case, any retrospection can only be applied by FCA methodology. It's not possible under STC. So if you think you can achieve better result or better VAT apportionment, then HMRC is happy for you to go back and claim back your over-declared VAT over the last four years. So obviously, FCA also have its own benefit, which is not available under STC method. However, there is a certain way of claiming VAT, which not done if which if which is not done correctly may prejudice your your application. So you do need to have specialist um, opinion or advice. So far, what we have discussed is all about output VAT, VAT on your cells. The next part will be focusing on your uh, input VAT. So we often receive a question from optician that whether they can recover all of their input tax on purchase and, and expenses? Well, our answer is always, it depends. If you remember at the start, we discussed that VAT on zero rated is zero, but all related input tax is recoverable. We also discussed that VAT on exam supply is zero, but unlike zero rated supplies, all related input VAT is potentially irrecoverable. Unless irrecoverable VAT is below the de minimis limit. And what is this de minimis limit? It is actually a limit of 7,500 per year or 625 per month. If your related input tax for exempt for exempt supply is below this limit, you can claim full VAT back. But if you exceed this limit, you lose all of it. It is kind of gambling. You if you if you are below this limit, you win. If you go beyond this limit, you lose it all. Therefore, it is important to seek professional advice when, when to buy expensive equipment or undertaking major refurbishment at your practice. We believe over the time, annual de minimis rate of 7,500 has eroded. 
current estimates suggest that if the de minimis rate increased with inflation over the year, the current rate of de minimis would be over 22,000 pounds. Therefore, with this in mind, the number of opticians exceeding de minimis has increased significantly over the period. Another question, which is very common, when is leasing of an asset beneficial for VAT recovery purpose? We receive this question a lot that whether we should buy asset outright or lease it. Well, it also depends on the minimus limit. If by breaking down the cost of the asset and spread the and spreading over the VAT incurred over a number of years, enable the practice to remain de minimis or remain under the de minimis, then it is better to lease it off. At least you will get your VAT back by just leasing out the, out the asset, uh, asset. So the next thing, how much VAT can I recover on practice refurbishment cost? First of all, it is very important to take professional advice when it comes to refurbishment. One of the reasons is to make sure you keep below the de minimis limit, if possible. And second is, VAT can be very complicated when it comes to building, ref building work. Even one building can have different VAT treatments. It is possible to claim VAT back on fixture and fitting, let's say if they are directly linked to standard rate of supplies, for example, display units, shelving, uh, showcases, mirrors, you can claim VAT back on those expenses. At the same time, it is also possible that you won't be able to claim refund on, on let's say on your roof repair. Um, so, and there are other tax related matters when it comes to building refurbishment. So it's better to take a professional advice. Our last topic of this webinar or this video is, um, last question actually, is can I use a special partial exemption method other than the standard method for determining my input VAT recovery? Currently, HMRC only ex accepts standard method, which is sale-based method to determine input VAT recovery. This means that high the exemption on sale, the lower the potential of input VAT recovery on general expenditures. As the all accountant, we are looking ways to break this link. And we have started putting forward suggestion to HMRC, which are based on input rather than output. It is anticipated that HMRC will respond on this hour matter uh, within two to three months. If we success, if we will be successful uh, in our negotiation, then it will enable sizable practices to, to claim their VAT without worrying about the minimus. In other words, they will have a full recovery. So part of this video, we are offering two free things. We are offering free VAT health check and we are also giving you our book for free. So what you will get in this free VAT health check? Well, within this free VAT health check, you will get three pages long report on your current VAT situation. And then we will let you know whether you can uh, recover your overpaid VAT, which can go back up to four years. We will also let you know whether it's beneficial for you to switch over from one method to another one, or whether you can negotiate better, better percentage with HMRC for your practice. So this, this health check is free, and there's nothing to lose actually for you. Um, we'll do it for free, uh, and you, you can just um, take our report and walk away. You, you got nothing um, 
string with this this free uh, offer so um, uh, this conclude today's uh, video um, I hope you enjoyed and um, and hopefully I will hear from you thank you